you know, I hope it does you well. I, I, you know, you didn't have to do it, um, but you did it. So, <laughs> not a lot of things you get a reward in life, but um, you chose to do it. So for that, I'm really touched. I'm also humbled, also inspired, especially by, you know, all of you, but definitely you. And so, um, so thank you again. Um, so um, having said that, um, let's start with chapter seven. All right, so work on your chapter seven homework if you have not done so. Today is October 26th. All right, um, so we're gonna talk about the electrons here. Electrons um, are very strange, okay? We think of electrons as sort of orbiting the nucleus. Is that not so? Um, I think that's correct, right? Electrons kind of orbit the nucleus. They buzz around the nucleus. And uh, here I'm going to call this center thing the nucleus, which houses protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged. Neutrons are neutral charged. So we want to dedicate some time talking about these. Uh, first and foremost, I want you to know about these electrons that orbit the nucleus of an atom is that um, they are waves and they are particles. Okay, is it a wave? Yes. Is it a particle? Yes. Okay, it's both. So I call that wave-particle duality. Okay. Electrons are waves, electrons are particles. Also light, light, okay, that, you know, that light there, this light there, it's waves that are process, our eyes process, it's also uh, particles. Okay, by the way, light particles, just as, this is just vocab, vocabulary. <laughs> light particles are known as photons, okay, photons. So first thing, waves and particles, okay, wave-particle duality. This is the whole Albert Einstein physicists, you know, all these great physicists, uh, they, they, they realize that this subatomic particle, the electron, is both. So that was a big deal, 1900s, 1920s or so. It's a wave, it's a particle, it's both at the same time, okay? Uh, that, so that's one important thing here. The next important thing is this idea of quanta. Okay, quanta. Okay, so wave particle duality number one. Uh, I'll define this a little bit later on in this course. And number two, wave particle duality. Important themes of the electron or of the atom, let's say. But really, or, you know, the electron does all of this business wave-particle duality. And then um, the next thing here is energy. Okay, we want to talk about energy of transitions. Okay, uh, involving the electrons. Okay, so these are the kind of themes that I want to talk to us, to you guys about uh, for today's lecture. All right, um, is it a wave? Electrons, yes. Is it a particle? Electrons, yes. Okay. So let's talk briefly about a wave, the anatomy of a wave, wave anatomy. What are the parts of a wave? Okay, what are the parts of a wave? So first of all, let's, um, excuse me, let's uh, define a wave as an oscillating piece of energy. Okay, I use the word piece in quotation marks, <coughs> oscillating piece of energy. Okay, so it oscillates. Think of going to the beach. Okay, we go back and forth, back and forth as a wave. Uh, in trigonometry, there's the sine wave and cosine wave. This light coming from this projector, there's some wave behavior to it. So what do I mean by wave behavior? 
Okay, a wave oscillates back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, if we have the top part of the wave, okay, and move it to the next top part of the wave, okay, we have what's called wavelength. Okay, wavelength. Top part to, to top part, uh, bottom part to bottom part. Okay, that's the idea of this idea of a wavelength. Okay, we're talking about how to dissect, bless you, how to dissect a wave. Okay, the parts of a wave. Wavelength uh, has the abbreviation lambda. Okay, lambda. This is the Greek alphabetic letter lambda. Okay, you're thinking top to top, bottom to bottom. This area with no energy, remember, uh, there's energy component to um, this. Uh, that's called a node. Node to node, bottom to bottom, top to top. That's a wavelength, whichever, you know, one end to the next end. Its, it's uh, abbreviation is lambda, and the units of wavelength are nanometers. Actually, it's meters, but we customarily, customarily call it uh, nanometers, 10 to the minus 9 meters. Okay. So wavelength is lambda. Top to top, bottom to bottom, node to node, OK? Um, the highest point of the wave, um, the magnitude of this is called the amplitude. So where the uh, wave hits the topmost part, okay, that is amplitude. That um, amplitude. So the higher the amplitude, I guess, the bigger the energy, so to speak. Okay. So that is the amplitude. Let me uh, highlight that in green. And then finally, the last point. So wavelength is number one. Amplitude is number two. Uh, another important part is what's called frequency. OK, the other anatomy of the wave is called frequency. OK, the units of frequency are hertz. Okay, this is important now. The units of frequency are hertz. All right, the abbreviation for Hertz is that. And um, the units of Hertz, this is important, one over second. OK, one over second is Hertz. Okay, what is the definition of frequency? OK, how many times the wave travels past a point? Okay, how many times a wave passes a reference point? Let's call this reference point this human, human one and human two, OK? So how many times, the definition of a frequency, how many times the wave passes a, a certain reference point? Okay, how many times the wave, oscillating piece of energy, how many times it passes a certain reference point. Okay, so remember these things are whoop, 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 okay, traveling. Okay, so let's say let's say as an example we have wave A, and let's say as an example we have wave B. Okay? So let me ask you guys. Um, wave A or wave B, wave B, how many times does this wave pass through this guy? versus how many times does this wave, wave B, pass through this guy? Okay. So does the wave pass through this person fast or more or less? Okay. Which has the higher frequency, I'm trying to say? Okay. Which one passes through this person more, A or B? B? Obviously, yeah, it's B. So we say wave B has the higher frequency, right? Because wave B is you know, kind of like this, if you look at my hands. And then wave A, isn't it kind of like this? OK. See, wave B is like this. So obviously, you're going to hit through this guy many, 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 many more times than wave A. OK, so wave B, this is correct, has a higher frequency in hertz, 1 over second. But 
but what about the wavelength? Okay, let's look at the wavelength here. Wavelength for B is this much. Okay. What about wavelength for A? Okay, that much. So wave B has, talking about wave B now, higher frequency, but a lower wavelength. Okay, lambda. Okay. Wave A, on the other hand, has, wave A, on the other hand, has a lower frequency, higher wavelength, right? Isn't the wavelength this much? Okay. Whereas in wave B, it's only this much. So wave A has, we're going to say, a lower frequency. and a higher wavelength. All right, so there is um, what's called an indirect relationship. Wavelength lambda and frequency, I'm going to call frequency V. Okay, frequency is V, sort of the speed of the wave, frequency or speed of wave. Remember, the units are hertz. Units of frequency, hertz, one over second. Units of frequency, hertz, one over second. Units of frequency, hertz, one over second. So wavelength and frequency are indirect relationship, indirect proportions. And then finally, wavelength times the frequency is going to equal to the speed of the wave. Okay, speed. Okay. So frequency is is I, I you know wavelength frequency is sort of the um, how fast the wave is. Uh, it's like a cycle. Okay, instead of saying speed, I'm going to say this is probably the correct term, terminology, cycles, frequency or cycles of the wave. Because remember, this thing is cyclical. So. Cycles of the wave. And if you multiply wavelength times frequency, you get speed. All right, now the next important thing about this chapter is the electromagnetic spectrum that's being talked about here. First of all, it's a spectrum. So they actually interviewed Mark Zuckerberg a while ago, and he's the founder of Facebook, okay, the discoverer or founder of Facebook. And they ask them in this interview, um, who is your inspiration? You know, who, who do you derive inspiration from? Or who do you like? Or whatever, He's some, whatever the question, something about what favorite scientist you like. And Mark Zuckerberg, who created Facebook, he said uh, James Maxwell. James Maxwell was his favorite or more, most inspirational scientist. And uh, it was James Maxwell who formulated and sort of discovered or categorized the electromagnetic spectrum. He mentioned that without Maxwell and his discovery and layout of the electromagnetic spectrum, we wouldn't have you know, all the things we take for granted, computer science and you know, remote controls and light and microwaves. It was James Maxwell. And a lot of other people also think the same way. In terms of brilliance, uh, it was uh, the James Maxwell. So James Maxwell sort of um, came up with this idea of, of electromagnetic waves. He also came up with this whole uh, idea of the electromagnetic spectrum around uh, the 1870s or so. So there's two things about uh, um, the electromagnetic spectrum. First of all, it's a spectrum, okay? It's right here. 
Okay, and even there's a part of the electromagnetic spectrum we can see. I know this is in black and white and not color, but there's a part we can see here. Uh, there's a part we can hear. There's a part that's used in diagnostic imaging. So, um, yeah, okay, it's entirely a spectrum, okay, of which a small slither, of which a small slither we can actually see. So, um, so the electromagnetic spectrum, I'm going to say EM, <laughs> just okay, EM spectrum. Okay, it's a spectrum, and um, it consists of two waves traveling perpendicularly to each other. Okay, so it's important. It's a good multiple choice question. Uh, two waves. We just talked about waves, at, uh, frequency, amplitude, wavelength. Two waves traveling perpendicularly to each other. Okay, two waves traveling perpendicularly, perpendicularly to each other. What are those waves? Okay, one is the magnetic field wave, B. I'm going to put a little arrow above, and that means it's a vector. That's all. It means a vector. And you'll learn about that in physics or math class. So one wave is the magnetic field vector. And then the second wave is, these are traveling perpendicularly now, the electric field vector. So that's key point number one of the electromagnetic spectrum. They're traveling perpendicular to each other. Okay, point two, there's a certain energy. Energy of that electromagnetic spectrum, so the energy, and that is HV. Okay, H is Planck's constant. I'll give that to you on any exam, so do not memorize it. And then V is the frequency of the wave, okay, cycles of the wave in hertz. Hertz, Hz, 1 over second. Okay, so, so there's energy in these, well, obviously, right? Look at this, there's energy. Okay, that's energy. <laughs> X-rays are energy, right? Uh, you never realize that there's energies in the radio. It's emitting electromagnetic radiation. It's that. It's just that you can hear it. Uh, microwaves, obviously, electromagnetic radiation that heats. Okay, it's a form of energy. Same with the UV lamps. X-rays are electromagnetic radiation that's very high energy. Very, very high energy. Right? Obviously, how many of you have had an X-ray done? Right? When you go to the dentist office, they put uh, a cover and they do some low dose on you. So that's a lot of um, energy. It's part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and then we have the visible region. Again, sorry, this is not in color. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, you're green uh, or you're blue, Harpers, or you're white. They are emitting energy. Oh, Okay, electromagnetic radiation. It's not harmful, okay? Not like x-rays, which can be harmful. It's not harmful. It's just that that radiation can get processed by, you know, the brain, the visual cortex of the brain or whatever that is. So there is a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see. Okay, you may have heard of Roy G. Biff. Roy G. Biff. Okay, there's a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum we can see, a small slither of it. There's a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum we can hear. There's a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that we use, okay, microwave heat. There's also IR, okay, infrared. That's part of the electromagnetic spectrum when you turn on, off the remote control. And then there's real high energy here, the X-rays and the gamma rays. Okay, so, you know, harmless. Uh, useful, those we can see, and then use that are really powerful. It can penetrate tissue, right? So again, I uh, want to reiterate my apologies for this not being clear, but the high energy one, if you can see this here, uh, the high energy 
portion of the electromagnetic spectrum have uh, what I would like to say a high frequency but a low wavelength, high, high frequency in hertz and a low wavelength lambda. Okay, you can kind of see that E equals HV. Okay, so higher the frequency V, more E, so that's this region. And then let's go to the other end, the radio. Okay, 96.5, you know, megahertz. Okay, megahertz, or 105.1 .1 megahertz. Okay, not harmful, okay? Uh, energy that we can hear. Uh, this is kind of what I'd like to call low energy. And the low energy, if you look at the numbers here, if you have a better copy, uh, this would be a uh, very high wavelength in nanometers and a uh, high wavelength but a low frequency. Okay. And low energy. So, and everything in between runs the gamut. Everything in between uh, is, runs the gamut between low and high frequency, low and high wavelength. All right, so that is the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, really every facet in our lives, right? Microwave, infrared, UV. Okay, UV is from the sun or the tanning beds. Uh, they're actually pretty harmful. They have enough energy to mess up your DNA. They cause your DNA to clump. So UV radiation is not so good in some aspects. All right, point one, point two. The final point, point three, is that these travel at the speed of light. This is an important point. So let's make that here at the bottom. Okay, the third important point about electromagnetic radiation, EM stands for electromagnetic radiation. They travel at the speed of light, okay, which is a constant that I will give you as well constant that I will give you. So wavelength times lambda, that speed is C. C, which stands for the speed of light. Okay, so C, speed of light, is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. <laughs> okay, so good equation to know. Um, I'll probably give it on the exam, but for all the people that are doing MCAT and other exams, probably it's good to know. <coughs> Lambda times frequency is equal to speed of light C. Okay, C is the speed of light. These travel at the speed of light. All of these things. So three important aspects of the electromagnetic spectrum. <coughs> All right, wave particle duality, energy of these guys. The energy of these guys come in the form of quanta. Okay, quanta. Quanta is what how I'm going to define it as a discrete packet of energy. Okay, a discrete packet of energy. So, so what is a discrete packet of energy? Um, how many of you? Jog stadium steps. You've done that? You've jog stadium steps? So, kind of like that idea to get from one level to the next level, you need a quanta. So, let's jog stadium steps. I'm not going to do it for real. <laughs> so, uh, let me throw a number here. Let me throw a number. Uh, I'm going to throw, let's say, 100 kilojoules of energy. 100 kilojoules of energy. Let's just, I just threw it up in the air like that, random. All right, um, let's say to get to a step as I'm jogging, okay, I need to expend 100 kilojoules of energy. So I need 100 kilojoules of energy to get from 
here to, let's say, here. That's how much I uh, put forth. Okay. Now, let me ask you this question here. Um, let's say instead of 100 kilojoules of energy, remember, that's how I need to get from the bottom to the second rung. Let's say I put 150 kilojoules of energy. Okay, will I get to the second rung? It's more energy. Should I? Yes or no? More energy is better, right? What about 200 kilojoules of energy? Should? You guys agree? Okay, the answer is no. Okay. Yeah, 100 and 100 only gets me from point A to this point B. Okay. What about 101? Will it? No. Okay, so 100 and 100 kilojoules alone is what I need to go from here to here. Even 101 will not get me to this energy level, will not get me to this state. Okay, that's a quanta. It's a very specific amount of energy. Whatever form it may be, it's a very specific amount of energy. Let's say it takes me 250 kilojoules of energy to go from here to here. Okay? I don't think my knees can reach it. To go from here to here. I do 300, will I get to the third rung? Yes or no? 250 and 250 only. Okay. So it's a packet. And another way to describe a packet would be like little candy bars. You're free to take some home. Because little candy bars. Each of these represent, if you think about it in your mind, a quantum. Okay, so if I want to get from here to here, that's, let's say, I don't know, let's say three quanta. Okay. Three units of energy. If I have three units of energy, I get from here to here. Okay. Four, will I get from here to here? No. No. Very exact amount. Okay, that's called a quanta. And here we're going to describe it as a discrete packet of energy. Quanta. Okay, quanta. <clears throat> and of course, that energy is in the form of E equals HV. Okay, Planck's constant times the frequency. All right, so that's what I want you to recognize when we're talking about this idea, this concept of a quanta. Okay, more is not the best. Okay, all of these atoms have energy levels, and uh, when you have these energy levels to go to an electron from energy level one to energy level two, specific quanta. Okay. Let's talk about this a little bit more. So let's say we're talking about the atom here. And on the y-axis, we have energy. And then let's have energy levels in the atom. Okay, we're talking about the atom here. So any of you like to play video games? Probably most of the guys do. Okay, that's good. All right, so just me, it was 8-bit Nintendo. <laughs> then I stopped. But let's say you have level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4 of your video game. So we'll call the energy level level 1, level 2, level three, let's go on, okay, level four, okay, so on and so forth, okay. And then we have an electron here, okay, put a little dot, we're within the atom, okay, imagine you're closing your eyes, you're zooming right into the atom, these electrons, wave particle, duality, and I'm going to hit it, I'm going to hit it with a quanta. I'm going to hit it with a quanta of energy. I'm going to hit that electron in the atom with a quanta of energy. And what happens is that um, I'm going to hit it with enough quanta so that it gets excited from the ground state. Okay, this is everything. The atom is fine. I just hit it with a quanta. And it was in the ground state. 
and I excite it with a quanta E equals HV and enough to get it, it's a quanta to, let's say, N equals 3. So I'm going to call this excitation, okay, which is enough to get it from n equals 1 to n equals 3. So excitation. So what happens to that electron okay, after excitation? What happens after you get excited? What happens after a small kid gets excited? What will they do? They crash, okay? Instead of using the word crash, we're going to use the word relaxation. Okay, so correct, Antonio, but let's use the scientifically chosen word, and that's relaxation. And it's going to relax back to the ground state. So it's going to relax back, boom, 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 boom. Back to the ground state. So going back down, we have relaxation. Remember, this is all happening within the atom, and it's a quanta. Okay, relaxation. All right, so excitation, relaxation, what do you think happens also? This may be a little bit difficult for you to guess. What happens after you excite? You get promoted. We promote. Okay, promotion. It's a word you'll see. But after promotion, Antonio was correct, it relaxes back to the ground state. What happens as it relaxes back down? What will it do? Anybody know this? What will happen? Anyone want to gather a guess? As it goes back down, what will it do? It will emit. There is emission. Okay, emission. And it will emit. What form of energy will it emit? Okay, it will emit energy the, in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, either visible, either UV, either microwave, it will emit. Okay, so after excitation, as it relaxes back down, you have emission. And the emission is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. In fact, every element here in the periodic table has its own emission spectrum. And you can see here, these are part of the emission spectra that are visible, right? Can't we see these lines? Okay, we see these lines. So these are the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. That each of these elements in the periodic table are emitting, okay? emission. So after it relaxes, it emits, and it emits in either the visible, you see that there, UV, IR, whatever it may be. So that is this whole concept of a quanta. You need a quanta, though, okay, to go from n equals 1 to n equals 3. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, by the way, this is happening within the atom. Okay, so, okay, if you hit it with enough energy, you can actually, we're not doing this now, but if you hit it with enough energy, you can actually kick out the electron out of the atom. Okay, but we're not doing that. This is all within, like the video game where n equals 1 level, n equals 2, n equals 3 levels, energy levels. So kicking out the actual electron, that's called ionization energy, and it's something we'll talk about a little bit later on in Chapter 8, if you're part of your studying, because we are. You kick it out, yes. Uh -huh. You strip it. Okay, But we're not talking about that here. We're talking within the atom. So let me just box this. This is happening within the atom. We're not. The electron gets excited with the right quanta. It gets promoted to a higher energy level. Then it immediately relaxes back to ground state or whatever the initial state, uh, back to the initial state. As it gets down, back down, relaxation, there's emission. Emission in um, 
whatever region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Now enough energy, we can kick out the electron out of the atom, and that's called ionization energy. And we're not talking about that here. All right. So that's this whole thing I just described is called the photoelectric effect. Okay, the idea of excitation, relaxation, photoelectric effect. And um, yeah, usually um, yeah, a lot of times you emit, you can emit uh, photons. Okay, you can emit IR, infrared, you can emit UV, whatever it is. Okay, I don't know what, depends on the quanta, okay, what you can emit, okay, whatever region of the electromagnetic spectrum. <clears throat> a couple of equations here. I think we already went over this. All electromagnetic radiation travels at the speed of light. Okay, so I will give you this formula and I'll also give you speed of light not something you need to memorize. And then there's an energy associated with this electromagnetic radiation. Okay, definitely if you get an x-ray done in the dentist office or the doctor's office, definitely you'll feel that energy. And that's E equals H. V H is Planck's constant and it is 663 uh, times 10 to the minus 34 joule second, joule times second. That's your Planck's constant. Okay. So I'll give you that on the exam. You do not need to memorize any constants here. Okay. And then obviously V is frequency in hertz. Okay. The units of hertz are 1 over second. Hertz is 1 over second, Hertz is 1 over second, Hertz is 1 over second. Let's do a practice problem here quickly. Um, hopefully, I did bring my calculator. Just can't seem to find this, find it in this mess. But, um, right, the energy of a photon is 5.87 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Uh, what is the wavelength in nanometers? Okay, wavelength in nanometers. All right, first of all, I want to bring your attention to one thing, okay? If you step back from this problem without getting into the weeds or without getting into the math. Okay, photon is generally what we associate with a particle. Is it correct? Is it not so? Particle. And what are we being asked to find? Okay, something associated with a wavelength. Okay, so this is an example of that wave-particle duality that I've been kind of harping about at the beginning of the class. Okay, they're giving you something that's particle, like a photon, very, very tiny particle. They're asking you to find something associated with a wave, behavior of a wave. So let's go ahead and do this. The energy of a photon, uh, these guys are electromagnetic radiation, so E equals HV. And they also travel at the speed of, sorry, speed of light, so lambda times frequency equals c. Okay, so uh, with that we should be able to find the wavelength. Wavelength here is c over v. Okay. <coughs> and um, all right, so all right, the energy here is 5.87 times 10 to the minus 20 joules.
Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times second. Okay, that's H, and um, I'll definitely give that to you on the test. So we're going to solve for the frequency here now. 5.87 times 10 to the minus 20 joules divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times second. Can everyone see this? And hopefully everyone will see joules, joules cancel. You'll get 1 over second, which is hertz. So let's do this quickly here. Uh-oh, what happened? Why am I in complex form? So 5.87 exponent minus 20 we divided by 6.63 exponent minus 34. Uh, 8.85 times 10 to the 13 hertz. Okay, 1 over second is hertz. So that's our V. I'm going to put that in here. So lambda now is C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Meters over second. Um, v is the frequency, we just found that, is 8.85 times 10 to the 13 hertz is 1 over second. So I'll just put that one over a second like that. And this second and this second cancels. We're left with meters. So 3 times 10 to the power of 8. 3 exponent 8 divided by 8.85 exponent minus uh, exponent, excuse me, ah, exponent 13. You should double definitely check my math here. <laughs> uh, 3.39 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Three point three nine times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Uh, that's technically our answer, but generally we like to use nanometers. So to get it in nanometers, 3.39 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Um, one meter, okay, one meter, okay, has a lot of nanometers in it. Nano is very small, so one meter has a lot of nanometers, and nano is 10 to the ninth nanometers, okay? That's the conversion factor. In other words, this one meter ruler has Nano is very small, has so many nanos in it. So that's correct. One meter is 10 to the, nine, 10 to the nine nanometers. All right, so meters and meters cancel. Three, 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 nine times 10 to the minus six times one exponent nine. What's that? 3,390 nanometers, something like that. 3,390 nanometers. So that's the sort of the flow, the pipeline, on how you go about doing this problem. All right, very quickly, um, to wrap up today's lecture, uh, just recognize about the models of the atom. So this is Bohr's model of the atom. It's a hydrogen atom. And, you know, this is the idea I've been kind of mentioning to you about this uh, excitation and relaxation. So excitation here, we're hitting it with a quanta. It gets excited to a new energy level. 
and then it relaxes back. Okay, just kind of hitting their theme point here as it relaxes back. Okay, it emits. Okay, there is emission here. Okay, and it also emits in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, you kind of see that here. Uh, this is for hydrogen, but you can see we have a lot of emission here, and it's not just in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, it could be in the UV region, it could be in the visible region, we're talking about emission now. It could be the IR region, it could be in all different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Uh, I'm going to omit this for the time being, and I'm going to omit the Broglie equation um, for the time being, so we will not test you on that. There is a homework problem, so you can get your practice doing that, uh, but for now, um, just for sake of expedition, I'm going to move on to electron configuration the last three minutes or so. Uh, page 10 is where I'd like to start off now. All right, I have three minutes here, so let me see what I can start in three minutes. Uh, let me start by giving you, well, I won't give you my home address. I used to give my home address, but now I know the address of the school, so I'll give the address of the school. I think it's 5100 Ramsey Street. <laughs> no more home addresses here. Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28311. All right, so this is an address happens to be the address of our school. So I want to ask you guys the question the last two minutes. If I were to ask you guys or request you guys to sort of summarize this address of our school in four terms, just four, how would you do that? Four terms. Give me these four terms and I should be able to get the address. Four. Four items. Street, very good. Zip code. City. The state. Okay, very good. All right, so theoretically, if I give you these four things, I give you the state, zip code, city, and the state, you should be able to find the location, the location, the location of where we are at, okay? Now, similarly, we want to do the same thing for the location of an electron, okay? Okay, which has wave particle duality. Really, we cannot find the location of an electron because the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. I still got one minute, so <laughs> extract every second. Uh, we really can't find it because these are clouds and they're moving around. They're waves that travel. They're also particles. But if we want to find the location, I use that in quotation marks, the location of an electron, it's going to be four quantum numbers. Just like you guys gave me four items to find the address of the school. To find the location of an electron, uh, we're going to use four numbers. They're called quantum numbers to determine the location. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle tells us we really cannot find that location. Four quantum numbers give us the location, quote unquote, of the electron, and these quantum numbers are n, l, m sub l, and then m sub s. Okay. Of these four, n and m sub s are the easiest. L and m are a little bit more difficult. So, with that being said, we will uh, continue with this next week. Do your chapter seven homework and start chapter eight, and. Uh, I think I'll see you all next week. You all, um, if you want to do the lab, you can do the lab since no one is showing up. Uh, but you three, obviously, <laughs> are done with the lab except for your computer lab. All right, thank you.